Hello, Taras here. Welcome to another episode of our running series on OSA television, What is a Fish? Today, we're gonna to be talking about some ancient Goliath fish. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Osteoglossidae. That Latin means bony tongues. These are an ancient family of fish that derived way back when the dinosaurs were roaming around and uh, they originated back in the ancient uh, section that is now contemporary South America. Right around the late Triassic, the Osteoglossidae broke off into the two major subfamilies that we recognize today in the aquarium trade. First of those is the Arapaimony. So the Arapaimony are ancient, huge, charismatic river fish that originate from the Amazon and Equisiba river basins. And they are designed to grow big, 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 big. They're designed to grow very big, very quickly, and become one of the most dominant apex predators in the river ecosystem. Arapaima gigas, this species can get upwards of, of nine, 10 feet plus. It can grow on average of more than a foot or, or two a year. In its native range, it's considered a extremely uh, popular and staple uh, food item because massive individuals can be harvested and feed entire villages for weeks. Of course, uh, because it got so popular, it is now aquacultured, and there are farms for these guys all across the world. As you can imagine, as they get to such a huge size, uh, they are also embraced as a sport fish. When I was over in Thailand, my girlfriend actually ended up hooking one. They are quite a fight, almost dragged her right in the water. Once they get to this larger size, they become predators of catfish. They are specialized catfish feeders, and they have giant jaws, which are designed to crush the skulls of catfish and uh, slurp them down. As far as the arapaimony, it should be noted that this also includes the African arowana. But now we'll be talking about the second uh, subfamily of the osteoglossidae. This is the osteoglossinae, or the arowanas. So now we're talking about the second subfamily of the osteoglossidae, osteoglossinae. So these are the arowanas, whereas your arapaima uh, stayed in South America, and the African arowana, also part of the arapaima subfamily, stayed in Africa. Arowanas uh, got distributed and defined themselves first off in South America, but then they also were able to spread to Australia when the Pangaea broke apart, and then they were able to re-recruit all the way throughout Asia up until the Indian subcontinent. So because of that, we actually have 10 arowana species. Uh, I guess you can't really count the African one. So we have nine arowana species in the aquarium hobby. Here are some good examples that we have right here. So the first one right here is a silver arowana. This is from South America. This species can get very, very large. It's native to the Amazon River Basin. And you can see here what characterizes the osteoglossinae, mainly staying towards the surface of the water. These are surface carnivores. They are going around and they have a series of pores throughout their entire body. And the, those pores and those two barbels that they have towards their upper lip are constantly sensing, sensing for pulses, sensing for electromagnetic signals, sensing for anything that might suggest that there's a struggling fish or maybe even a grasshopper or a spider about to fall off of a tree branch. So when that happens, these fish can actually propel themselves out of the water, jump up, hit a prey item on the branch, and then go back, which is why in South America, they're referred to as water monkeys. So the arowana, the silver arowana anyway, from South America, can get, get very, very big. Not super aggressive, a little bit more prone to get bullied unless it's going to eat something. It should always be kept in mind with all these species that they require very long, large aquaria to reach their adult sizes. And they will start growing relatively rapidly from this juvenile state. Uh, something that also is really important of note is that they are facultative air breathers, so these suckers can gulp air if they want. They uh, are good parents, they build nests, and they take care of their babies, and then depending on whether or not you're an Asian, a South American, or an Australian arowana, either the male or the female will mouth brood their babies. Compare the silver arowana, we'll go over and compare it to a Giardini, or something from the Oceanic region. The Giardini are part of the Australian arowanas. They are a little bit more stout and slightly less elongated than the silver arowana, but they have a little bit more charismatic rounded fins, and some of them can sport these wonderful little peaks of yellow and red coloration. And they are somewhat similar to some of the Asian arowanas, which you will not be able to see in our shop, 
because they are Asian arowanas, are an endangered species, and are illegal to sell in the United States. A couple reasons for that. Uh, firstly, because of uh, the frankly charismatic dragon-like appearance, these fish have long been the fascination of, of Asian fish keepers and are a status symbol of everything from a, a wealthy businessman all the way to a wealthy politician. So the fact that they are illegal to trade uh, makes them all the more valuable. And even though wild populations are in a state of rapid decline, there are huge farms that are done for arowanas. Farms where arowanas are sold for upwards of $300,000 a fish. Um, especially if they're special phenotypes and special colors and these farms have armed guards and these fish are treated like small royalty. Long story short, the Osteoglossini, big, aggressive, charismatic surface feeders, really cool fish, great personalities. You need a big, big, big tank to have them. Uh, they're not for everyone, but if you're able to have success with these, they are absolutely stellar. One of the most fantastic hallmarks of the aquarium trade. As always, if you have any other questions or families that you would like us to cover, subscribe and feed that algorithm like an arowana swatting a fat spider off the branch of an Amazon river, river bank. See you next time.